Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. On today's episode, we're upgrading this flatbed scanner to use USB-C, and I'll walk you through the process so that you can successfully upgrade any of your older devices to USB-C as well, right after this message from today's sponsor. Ah, JLC PCB. With 19 years of experience and five state-of-the-art factories, it's no wonder that over 5.4 million engineers across 180 plus countries rely on their reliable and affordable services. Getting started is easy. Simply upload your Gerber files, get an instant quote, and place your order within minutes. It's just that easy. Whether you're prototyping or producing in volume, JLC PCB offers unbeatable pricing with one to eight layer PCB starting from just $2. But it's not just affordability, JLC PCB delivers premium quality with lightning turnaround times. Your boards can be ready within as little as 24 hours. All thanks to their fully in-house production process, which ensures quality control at every stage. And right now, there's an exclusive offer where you can get six layer PCBs for just $5 with $30 off of your first order. If you're ready to take your electronic projects to the next level, visit JLC PCB. I've had this scanner for a few years now, and honestly, I like it. It does the job. It's pretty quick. It scans at a high resolution. I'm not sponsored by Canon unless they want to. The only problem it has is that it uses a, a micro B? Is it a micro or a mini? A mini USB type B cable. And this is the only thing that I have left that uses this cable. And frankly, I'm sick of it because this cable just ends up hanging around with the scanner. So I can't put the scanner neatly away without the cable being somewhere near it. So today, I want to be done with it. Without looking this up, I am certain that somebody has made a mini USB to USB-C port converter that I could just stick into this incredibly deep hole that they've made. Wrong way around. Um, and it will just stick out nice and flush and you can put your USB-C in there. But that's not how I want to do it. I want to disassemble this and actually solder on a connector that's a little bit next to the original connector because I still want to keep this connector because who knows what might happen. My, my upgrade might break in the future, just in case I wanna have this port accessible. So I wanna put my USB-C port like right next to it if I can. And the way normally people would do this is with a USB-C breakout board, but I don't have one of those. So instead, I'm going to use one of these USB-C to USB-A connectors. You can get them for pretty cheap. These ones all came with cables that I've previously purchased and there's literally a USB-C port and a regular USB at the end. And if I peel the skin off, maybe I should do this under the microscope. I recently upgraded my microscope to USB-C as well. And with a pair of wire cutters, I'm going to be uh, pulling at the surface of it. I don't want to break it. I just want to pull away this rubber molding they have on it. This one is actually a lot more compact than ones I've done this with previously, but it should still work. Uh, I'm gonna try to remove this USB-A uh, casing. Okay, this actually looks pretty promising. Uh, I'm not actually gonna remove any more of this uh, over molding on this USB because that's kind of adding extra rigidity so that we can stick it down properly later. And I'm going to connect my wires to these exposed pins right here. I'm going to tin them first to see if they can actually accept solder. And yes, they can, fantastic. So I'm going to put a blob of solder on each of these. I've got a USB pin out on my monitor over there and it's telling me that this one here is ground, this one here is five volts and the two in between are data. So let's solder on wires to each of those. I like to do it color coded so I know which is which. I'm gonna use some blue tack to just hold that in place. And now I can do ground, give it a little tug to make sure it's not coming off. Five volts. So I'm going to use blue for my data plus right there and green for my data minus. Now, USB can be very flaky if you don't take good care of the data wires. We don't want to keep them too long. I'm keeping them long for now because I'm not sure where this is going to end up inside the scanner. But you also want to give them a little bit of a twist so that they're, uh, uh, well, twisted. I don't 
quite know what this does uh, to the data. Maybe going down in circles is a thing that data likes to do, but uh, I've had good success by giving them a little twist. And we also want to keep them right about the same length, but we'll get to that when we open the scanner. So now we have to open the scanner. Okay, and try not to touch uh, this because that's where all the uh, sensitive scanning stuff happens. It's basically like smudging the lens. Uh, we just need access to this bit really. Admittedly, I did have to look up a teardown video of this scanner because I had no idea how to get into it. Okay, and I'm going to disconnect the cables that are connected in here and just grab the board that's in here. There's some chunky capacitors in here, so let's just make sure those are discharged before we continue. Perfect. Let's set this aside and grab my microscope again. This is our USB right here, and the pin out here is five volts. Uh, these two are data. This is an ID pin, but that's not being used in this situation. And then we've got ground. And hopefully, because I can see that these all have vias that are taking it to the other side. So if I flip this over, hopefully the designers have been nice enough to give us a bunch of test points right there. So that's our data test point. Uh, I think that's going to be our five volt test point. And uh, well, ground is kind of dotted all over the place. So we can probably just use any of those. But yeah, we have test points. Thank you designers for making that a lot easier. Otherwise we would have had to desolder this and solder onto these tiny pins right here, which is not particularly fun, but it is doable. Let's figure out which ones are which. I'm going to grab my multimeter, put it into continuity mode, which just means it beeps when these two ends touch. So grab the USB-C port that you made earlier. We're going to probe some pins uh, and see where they go. So the first one is going to be ground, which is pretty easy. That's this one around here. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to hold these in place because uh, the probes are a little bit thick, so they like to uh, touch the casing. Uh, so that should be any of these pins. That's correct. That's fantastic. And now we should have five volts on this side. Okay, and is that five volts? That is indeed my five volt input, fantastic. Okay, so now let's see the data pins. Now they are slightly deeper in there, so they're gonna be even trickier with these probes. Okay, so now let's see, green is going to be on this side. So that's gonna be our green. And I assume that is going to be our blue. That is correct. Green, blue. Let's mark that down somewhere. I'm going to just kind of draw out the test pads so I know where they are. So we're not using that one. And then we have like two ground ones here. So these are both G. Uh, this one is 5V. And then I've already forgotten which way around the data goes. <sighs> and then that's going to be green. Fantastic and edge of the board is there, cool. So now we can actually solder on this connector to these test points, but just before I do that, I wanna see where the USB-C port ends up being inside of the uh, enclosure so that I know I can make the cables the perfect length. Uh, that goes in here like that. Oh, we've actually got loads of space for this. Hold on, does this get in the way? Uh, we can mount it on top of the IO shield. That works, right? Oh, wait, hold on. This moves backwards and forwards. We want to make sure that we're not interacting with that in case it smashes into it and then it can't like home properly. Oh, oh nice. You can actually just pick this up. Fantastic. That makes it a little bit easier to uh, find out where I can put it. I think that's just about going to fit in there. 
I think this might just work. Uh, I'm gonna have to give this a wipe down before I uh, close this up. But yeah, if I put it just there, that should be okay. Okay, so I'm gonna give myself a little mark here where I can drill a hole later for the USB. So it's just in the right place. Hopefully about there. Actually, should I do that now? Yeah, I should do that now. Let's drill that hole. I'm gonna use my uh, four volt Parkside Dremel. I really don't recommend this tool. Can't even get through plastic, worthless tool. And with a nice little scalpel, I can kind of clean that up a little. I think the Dremel actually just made this process way more messier than it needed to be. Well, don't do that. Hopefully that got rid of most of the mess. Uh, does my USB-C fit into it? No, it's ever so slightly too small. We can work that out. Does it fit in now? It sure does. Oh, that's nice and flush. Sick. <laughs> okay, so now let's solder on the USB onto the board. We wanna run the cables under here, so about there-ish. We wanna keep these cables as short as possible, but if we do have to have them long, let's try to keep them about the same length. It doesn't matter too much for the power, but it matters for the data lines. I'm gonna put some fresh solder on these pads. Now, the microscope does make this a little bit easier, but if I didn't have the microscope, I feel very confident in being able to do this just looking at it. This is actually one of the larger soldering iron tips I own, so that should give you a nice sense of scale. Compared to something like a fine tip, yeah, you can see that's these are perfectly doable. All right, I'm gonna try to keep the cables coming in from this side. So we've got ground. Give it a tug to make sure it's there. Five volts. Right there, beautiful. Green goes to this one here. Blue goes to this one here. That kind of just leaves us with testing. So uh, we should be able to just plug this into the computer and hopefully get an output. A moment of truth and plug it in. Nothing smells burnt, so that's good. Oh, I just realized I plugged this into power, not my computer. I don't actually know if it's going to turn on without having all the other bits connected to it because I'm pretty sure it needs those to like initialize. Uh, let's see if my computer actually comes up with anything in device manager when I do plug it in. Okay, it actually shows up on the imaging device. Fantastic. So we know it works. So we can start assembling it back. Go back in there, run the cable off to the side here. Beautiful. The uh, shield can go back on. Beautiful. The shield interacts a little bit. Let's squish the cables down under it a little bit. Perfect. And that should come out right there. Fantastic. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Um, let me grab some super glue to hold it in place temporarily whilst I'm waiting for my hot glue gun to heat up. Because no Mellow Labs project will be complete without super glue. Okay, we can uh, plug these back in. Yeah, we can actually screw this back in now. My hot glue appears to be ready. So let's just give that a little bit of a it lied to me. How dare you? I'm gonna use my spudger to spudge the hot glue on the underside as well. It's not the prettiest looking modification, but 
it does the job. Let's give this a bit of a dusting with one of these big dusty brushes. Going to give the glass a bit of a dusting too. I actually think it's dirty on the underside, so I'm not going to properly fully do that bit. Just going to put it back. Oh, I think it goes the other way. This way? Yeah, cool. So that goes in like that. And now that can go back on. Okay. And that is pretty much it. Let's make sure it fully works. Let's try scanning something. By the way, bit of a sight tangent, NAP2 is the best scanning program just ever. If that's the only thing you take away from this video, I'm fine with that. Just if you have a hope, the fuck? If you have a whole bunch of photos, uh, documents to, that need scanning, NAP2 is just such a good program. It has saved me just countless hours of scanning. I love it so much. Let's put some that, that, and some blue tack in there and do a quick little scan. And hopefully it comes out perfectly. That looks like exactly what I expect from a 300 DPI file. Perfect, it's done. So with that, I need to uh, clean this up, but we can now get rid of this god awful cable. Get out of here. And we have a beautiful USB-C cable at the back. Oh, this has been a long time coming. I'm so happy. If you're interested in seeing me upgrade more things to USB-C, check out the time where I upgraded my soldering iron to be USB-C compatible. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Support me on Patreon if you can. And I'll see you on next week's live stream. Goodbye.